Many will remember Pope Benedict in black or white, but his was a complex legacy. Kissing the hand here of late Pope John Paul II, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger would replace him just three days later, on April 19, 2005. The white smoke from the Vatican chimney let the world know the conclave had chosen Pope Benedict. The German conservative went on to lead the Catholic Church for just shy of eight years, his time marked by a strong belief in traditional values and scandal. You only have to look at the headlines the next day to know it was a controversial choice. The tabloids led on his history in the then compulsory Hitler Youth. Another called him God's Rockweiler, a nickname he'd earned in his previous job as the Vatican's enforcer of discipline. As Pope, he was accused of being too soft when it came to child abuse allegations against the church. They were the legacy of his predecessors, particularly the last five, ten years of the John Paul II years, were disastrous in terms of uh, getting to grips with some of the things that needed to get, get grips or whether it was the abuse crisis, whether it was financial uh, scandals uh, and other kinds of just governmental dysfunction. Um, so he had that land on it. He also had his own past to face. Just this year, a report commissioned by the German church accused him of ignoring and covering up child sex abuse when he was Archbishop of Munich. But the pontiff could still gather wide crowds. His superstar predecessor was a tough act to follow. He travelled the world and reached out to other faiths, making stop-offs at the Blue Mosque in Istanbul and to Jerusalem with a visit to the Western Wall. And for those that saw him as out of touch, he was the first pope to join Twitter and boldly break with tradition with conservative lingo. Announcing in Latin that he was resigning as pontiff in 2013 because of his health, becoming the first pope to retire in 600 years. I think looking back now on the Benedict pontificate in the light of the Francis one, uh, we can say quite, you know, it's quite clear that Benedict, uh, who was very honest about this, wasn't a great administrator. There were needs for profound reforms in the church, uh, which he began, he initiated, he tried, but ultimately would take a very different kind of pope who really did know how to govern, as it were, to do that. Making way for Pope Francis, he's remained in the grounds of Vatican City until his death today, aged 95. To some conservatives, he'll be remembered as a hero who raised their eyebrows at the more open views of Pope Francis. To others, he symbolizes a dark chapter in which the Catholic Church fought for survival amid allegations of abuse and corruption.